Hi everyone, I'm Timothy, a year 2 computer science student from NUS. As you all can already see by the title of this video, I wanted to make this video to shed some light on the modules you'll very likely take in your first year of computer science. All the modules I'll be going through are only the core CS modules listed in the NUS CS curriculum, so I'll be leaving out the general university level modules. The modules I'll be covering are based off of my experience in academic year 21 and 22. Although this video is based off of NUS modules, I believe there's a lot of similarity to other CS curriculums worldwide. With that said, let's jump into the modules. First up on this list is CS1101S, Programming Methodology, which is NUS CS' very own intro to programming module, and I took it under Professors Martin Hens, Boyd Anderson, and Lokot Lim. This module is based on this SICP textbook, which I'll link down below. Concepts taught in these modules are relatively difficult and revolves around functions and recursion. This module uses a scaled-down version of JavaScript called Source, which syntax is much easier to pick up. There are weekly coding assignments given on Source Academy, which are called Missions, which builds on what is taught in the bi-weekly lectures. For example, this is a mission where I'm supposed to construct the following image using the fractal recursive function. So this is a quick overview of what is covered. The first half of the semester, chapters 1 and 2, used with immutable data types, where variables are constants and cannot be changed during the execution of the program. To achieve this, concepts such as recursion are taught. After this module, you'll be very well acquainted with recursive functions. So just to give a quick teaser, a recursive function requires a base case and a recursive statement. To construct the recursive statement, we rely on wishful thinking, which is to assume that a smaller function, which in this case is factorial n minus 1, returns the desired output and you build your recursive factorial n function based off of this smaller factorial n minus 1 function. We are also taught on how to convert a recursive function into an iterative one, often with the help of inner helper functions. Concepts such as abstraction aims to teach us to build functions as general as possible, to abstract out commonalities in functions. For example, we can build an addition and a multiplication function separately. But with abstraction, we only have to build one general operations function which can both add and multiply given the correct inputs. Next, pairs and lists are introduced, where list is this particular structure made from enclosing pairs and other pairs. We will then create functions to manipulate and modify this list. So as you can see, in this first half of the semester, we have been dealing with immutable data types. Next, in the second half of the semester, we are introduced to mutable data types where variables can now be modified in the execution of the program. This makes debugging harder as variables are now free to change. To aid in our understanding of code, the environment model is introduced, which is a diagram to help us keep track of the various variables and scope in question. Understanding variable scope here is very important as there can be many variables with the same name in the program, but they are in different scope, and hence they are allowed to coexist. After which, we move on to basic algorithms where we learn linear search and binary search. As for sorting, we learn selection and insertion sort, as well as the divide and conquer approach of merge sort. Next, we went back to the inefficient implementation of the recursive Fibonacci function and optimize it with memoization to store previously calculated values to prevent repeated calculation. After which, we dive into arguably the hardest part of the module, which are streams, which are lists that process only when needed, with the help of functions with no arguments. So don't worry if you have no idea what I'm talking about, because I'll also be going through with you how to prepare for this module and all the other subsequent modules to come. So how do you actually prepare for this module? I'll say there's no straightforward way to prepare for this module specifically, because the content in this module is not something you can learn in a typical online course. But what I can say is to focus on learning recursion and functions. But if you really do want to learn module specific content, I've linked a set of lecture slides down below. However, it really isn't easy to understand by reading the slides alone without any guidance. So I would suggest leaving the learning till when school starts, when you have lecturers and TAs guiding you along. The following advice is not specific to this module, but basic computer science modules in general. And I would highly suggest doing CS50's Intro to Computer Science course, which teaches fundamental computer science concepts you will very likely encounter in your first year of studies. Concepts covered range from basic programming constructs, like variables, functions, arrays, for and while loops, to searching and sorting algorithms, and so on. Now we move on to our next module, CS1-3-1-S Discrete Structures, which is taught by Prof. Aaron Tan and Wong Ping Lok. 
This is your typical computer science discrete math course, which covers the mathematics required in computer science. Here is a quick overview of the topics that are covered. Topics include logic and proofs, sets, relations, mathematical induction, functions, cardinality, counting and probability, and graph theory. Topics from set theory onwards are all built upon the first three weeks, which includes Boolean algebra, mathematical notations, and proof techniques. Many questions will revolve around deciphering these mathematical notations first, and then proving a statement about a function or a relation or graph, etc., like seen over here. The first few weeks of content were easy to digest, and the questions asked during tutorials were quite straightforward. The difficult topics will come after, namely relations, functions, and a notorious topic of cardinality, which tries to prove why a certain infinite set is countable or not. So you will find this to be a very theoretical and mathematical mod that makes you question why you are even taking this module. But general advice would be to take this module seriously, as content from this module have significant carryover to your coursework in the future. For example, graphs and the various minimum spanning tree algorithms like Crasco and Prims will be covered again in CS2040S Data Structures and Algorithms module. So how do you prepare for this module? I recommend checking out Discrete Math 1 and 2 playlists by TrefTutor on YouTube. This playlist covers most topics in this module. Concepts are not too difficult to understand, but that also means this video series will be lacking in depth and difficulty. But this video series is certainly good for introducing you to the world of Discrete Math. So next up on this module list, we have MA2001, Linear Algebra, taught by Professor Victor Tan and Jonathan Teo. This module teaches the fundamentals of linear algebra, stuff that weren't taught in A-levels H2 mathematics, but is partially covered in H2 for the math. This module covers aspects such as linear systems, matrices, Gaussian elimination, Euclidean space, linear span, linear independence, basis and dimensions, eigenvectors, orthogonality, and linear transformation. I know, the module content is heavy, and concepts are very interlinked. Hence, it is very important for you to be clear of the previous concepts before moving on to the next concept. An important theorem which summarizes concepts across multiple chapters will be this invertible matrix theorem. So be sure to know this well. Usage of MATLAB was allowed, which is a software that aids matrix calculation. I, I highly recommend learning MATLAB well through the MATLAB worksheets and lecture videos given, as a good mastery of MATLAB will help you in fast calculation during exams, instead of manually manipulating the matrix by hand, which will take a really long time. For this module, I recommend a linear algebra playlist by Dr. Trevor Bezard. This playlist covers most major concepts in this module. And what I like about this video series is that it teaches linear algebra very succinctly and with the aid of diagrams for visualization. 3 Blue 1 Brown also has a linear algebra playlist, which is also great for building intuition with its amazing anim animations. But it's definitely far from sufficient to cover all of Cause's content. Now to the final core module I took in semester 1. ME 1521 Calculus for Computing, taught by Professor Chan Heng Huat. This is a standard introductory calculus module which builds on A level H2 mathematics. Our gauge around 30% was covered in H2 mathematics, with the rest of the 70% being new content which are more in depth. New content covered includes one variable and two variable limits, partial differentiation, series convergence, double integrals, and integration using polar coordinates. Derivations of the various theorems are taught but not tested which is a relief since the derivations can get pretty difficult. Scoring well for this module comes with practicing of tutorial questions, since question patterns are rather standard and can be learned. This module isn't too difficult if you come from an A-level H2 mathematics background. To prepare, I suggest recapping on H2 math topics of differentiation, applications of differentiation, integration, and applications of integration, as well as maybe a little bit of sequences and series. Some semesters might also cover vectors, so do keep a lookout. As for content beyond the H2 syllabus, a YouTube playlist I recommend is Khan Academy's Calculus and also his Multivariable Calculus playlist. However, this playlist contains many videos that are not covered in this module, so do take note. I also find this channel called Math is Power for You to be pretty good. More specifically, it's Power Series and Double Integrals playlist. This channel also contains many comprehensive calculus playlists, so do check them out. Now, we move on to the modules I took in semester 2. First up on this list, we have CS2030S Programming Methodology 2, taught by Professor Boyd Anderson and Wee Wei Sun. This is a continuation from the first method programming methodology class the semester before. 
However, this model is very different from the previous one, which basically teaches concepts of the Java language. Hence, you will take away from this module having a decent understanding of the Java language and its principles. The first three weeks will cover object-oriented programming concepts such as abstraction, encapsulation, inheritance, and polymorphism. And you will therefore be exposed to object-oriented programming constructs like classes, interfaces, as well as overloading and overriding. The next two weeks will cover types, where you will learn primitive and reference types, and how to abstract out types with the use of generics. And this topic of generics can get pretty confusing. Thereafter, we will go into the functional side of Java, where we learn functions such as map and filter, and the concept of functors and monads, as well as passing functions as arguments to another function. We will also touch on streams, which are lists that are lazily evaluated, or in layman's term, lists that are processed only when needed. Lastly, we touch on parallel and asynchronous computing in Java, where we learn about parallel streams, threads, the computable future API, and its underlying fork join fit framework. In this module, there is a great emphasis on writing clean and non-repetitive code, and also maintaining a strict client and implementer barrier by keeping fields private. They are not exposed to external classes. Weekly programming assignments also require students to write documentation and adhere to a style guide. Programming was not done on any IDE, but on a rather rudimentary text editor called Vim, and assessing of files will be done on a computer's terminal. Hence, doing terminal commands such as ls and cd are required. Overall, I would say that this is a rather important module since it covers the object-oriented programming paradigm and also introduces the basic principles of Java and also various programming practices. So, how do you prepare for this module? I suggest taking up a basic Java course to learn the syntax such as keywords to like public, static and void, etc. before delving into a Java object-oriented programming course. Learning Lab on YouTube provides a playlist on basic Java to get started on understanding its syntax. Nathan Schutz's YouTube channel provides playlists on Java ranging from basic Java to OOP concepts, core Java and also a little bit of data structures. What I like about his videos are the diagrams he provides which aids understanding. Last but not least, we move on to the last module, CS2040S, Data Structures and Algorithms taught by Professor Seth Gilbert. This is not as typical of a data structures and algorithms module as Professor Seth Gilbert sidetracks a lot into augmented data structures, which are data structures that are modified based on existing data structures. Like this binary search tree you see over here is modified to include the number of child nodes he has, which will make finding the rank of an element faster. You will see numerous topics here that can't be found in your typical data structures and algorithms module, like pick finding, order statistics, B trees, Steiner trees, but you also have your typical topics like searching and sorting, trees, hashing, and also graphs. This module is taught in Java, so basic Java knowledge is required. Many students will take this module together with the previous Programming Methodology 2 module, since the previous module teaches Java. However, the focus of this module is not so much to understand Java in depth, but rather on the understanding of algorithms. Hence, there's a greater emphasis in this module on pseudocode. I would say the only time where usage of Java is truly required is in the weekly programming assignments. To prepare for this module, I strongly recommend the Data Structures in Java playlist by Rob Edwards on YouTube. This professor teaches really well with easy to understand diagrams and coding a long style of teaching. If you would like 2040s specific content, Prof. Seth Gilbert also has his lecture playlist available on YouTube. But be warned that the difficulty of this playlist will be much higher than the previous one. So these are the core modules I've taken in my first year of computer science. I really hope that you have gained a better understanding of the kind of modules you will very likely take as a freshman in computer science, and the various ways to prepare for them. If you want more information on these modules, feel free to check out NUS Mods for its module reviews, and also feel free to browse it on Reddit. Lastly, I would like to address a common concern among CS students, which is that these modules are a lot of times very theoretical and not straight away applicable to what's required in the job market. This is actually true to a certain extent. What CS modules seek to do is to provide you with fundamental computer science concepts, give you essential reasoning skills, algorithm knowledge, and data structure basics. But it's not so much to get you job ready. In order to be job ready, it largely relies on your efforts outside of curriculum to learn practical coding. For example, doing side projects and learning new skills like web or app development with the help of online courses. 
Gaining internship experience is also very important as it tells the employer that you possess on-the-job experience and skill set. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, employers want students who have sufficient experience and skill sets to value add to their company. And having a CS degree alone is not going to give you that on-the-job experience and skill set. So while you're focusing on studying for that CS degree, don't forget to learn outside of the curriculum and build side projects. And land an internship when, whenever possible to maximize your employability when you graduate. With that, thanks for watching this video. If you found this video helpful, do like and subscribe to this channel as I'll be putting out more computer science content on my journey as a computer science student in NUS.